In our previous video, we looked at DC series motors and we calculated a few parameters, including the back EMF, the power and the torque of a DC series motor. And in this video, we're going to do something similar, but for what's called a DC shunt motor. Now, looking at this diagram and the circuit diagram that goes with it, we can see that a DC shunt motor is connected differently than a DC series motor. In a DC series motor, the field windings and the armature windings were all connected in series, one series circuit. But here we can see that the field windings and the armature have a parallel arrangement. So we have the field, uh, the field winding in parallel with the armature. And like our previous example, we've split the armature into two components just for ease of our calculations. We're considering the resistance of the armature to be a separate component and then the armature itself is going to produce a back EMF, which we're also going to calculate, just like in our previous video. So for our example here, I'm going to use the same values as we used in our previous video when we looked at the DC series motor. We've got a 12 volt supply, so a 12 volt battery here on the left hand side. And our field windings have a resistance of 18 ohms. And our armature has first of all a resistance of 1.2 ohms, but then when it starts to move, it's also going to produce a back EMF. Let's begin by considering the currents in our circuit, because our supply here is going to produce a supply current which feeds our circuit, but that current is going to split. And we're going to have some current going this way through the field windings, which I'm going to call the field current. And I'm also going to have some current going this way through the armature, which I'm going to call the armature current. So I'll mark those on first of all. We can see we've got our field current, which I'm going to call IF. And this way we've also got our armature current, which I'm going to call IA. Together they form the supply current. So I'll mark that on the left hand side here as well as IS, the supply current. And let's say for example's sake that the supply current in this uh, particular circuit is one amp. So I've got one amp supply current which is powering this motor. Let's begin first of all by calculating the field current and to do that we can just use Ohm's law because we can say that the field current has a voltage supplied to it of 12 volts uh, because these sections are in parallel so we'll find that the field, the field winding receives a supply of 12 volts and the armature receives a supply of 12 volts. These two elements are in parallel, and so they share the same supply voltage. So we can say using Ohm's law, which is V over R, we can say that the field, the field current is going to be 12, the supply voltage, divided by the resistance, which is 18, and that's going to give me a result of 0 0.67 amps. So of that one amp supply, 0.67 amps takes the form of the field current going this way. So the next thing we can say here is that the armature current, IA, is going to be the supply current, IS, minus the field current. Because if we think about it, we start off with one amp and 0.67 amps of it goes that way, the remaining current must form IA. So we can say that IA is IS minus whatever we lost to the field current IF. So we know that the supply current is 1 amp uh, minus the field current, which is 0.67. And we can say that's going to give us an armature current of 0.33 amps. So marking those on my diagram here, I can see that the field current uh, was 0 0.67 amps and we can see the armature current was 0 0.33 amps and we can now use that information to calculate AB, the back EMF of the armature when it's moving. So let's say our armature is at full speed it's, it's got a back EMF of EB, and we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law again to calculate EB, like we did in our last video. So what we can say, first of all, is we're supplied with 12 volts to this element of the circuit here. And of that 12 volts, 
some of it is going to be dropped across the resistance of the armature and whatever remains must be the back EMF and so we can set our formula up to look something like this we can say that EB is equal to VS minus VA the voltage dropped across the resistance of the armature there and like we did in our last video we don't know VA but we can express it in terms of Ohm's law because we know the current that goes through this resistor and we know the resistance of the resistor itself uh, so we can say uh, EB is equal to VS minus not VA but I a times R A. And so putting some values into our formula there, we know that Vs is 12, and we know that I A is 0 0.33, and we know that its resistance is 1.2 ohms. And calculating that, I get an answer of 11.6 volts. So now we know the back EMF EB of the armature here is 11.6 volts. Just like in our previous video, we can calculate the power in the armature by using the formula P equals I times V, because we know that the current in the armature is IA, 0.33 amps, and we also know that the voltage is going to take the form of the back EMF of the armature, which we've just worked out as being 11.6. And so calculating that gives me an answer of 3.83 watts. Again, thinking back to our previous video on DC series motors, we mentioned that there was another formula for power, which looks like this. P equals 2 pi NT over 60, where N represents the speed of the motor in revolutions per minute, RPM and T represents the torque. So the last thing we can do is we can use this formula to calculate the speed of the motor if we know the torque. So let's say for example that the torque in our motor is one newton meter. So I'll make a note of that at the bottom here. T equals one newton meter. And this means we're going to have to rearrange our formula here for N because we want to find out the speed of the motor when the torque is one newton meter. So to rearrange this formula, we're going to see it in the form of N equals 60 times P over 2 pi T. So using this formula now, we can put some values in. We can first of all say 60 times P. Well, we know that P, we've just calculated on the previous slide there, to be 383 watts divided by 2 pi times the torque so that's 2 pi and the torque we've just said is 1 so 2 pi times 1 and calculating that gives me a speed of 36.57 rpm so i hope you found this video on dc shunt board as useful First of all, for calculating the parameters like current and voltage in the circuit that we've seen there. And also calculating uh, the, the power of the motor and its speed as well. If you haven't already, you can check out our previous video, which is on DC series motors, where we perform similar calculations to the ones that we've seen in this video.